All right, vitamin D, very, very important in feeding your microbes. Your microbes are dependent on the vitamin D that you either get from the sun, you take as a supplement or get from your food, which by the way is almost next to impossible to get unless you're consuming a lot of fatty fish. But other than that, it's gonna be really hard to get it from the food. And many people don't go out in the sun as much. And so there's a lot of barriers in getting that vitamin D. And when you feed the microbiome, uh, they develop significantly in their diversity. So you can increase the diversity of your microbes with feeding them fiber from vegetables, but you can also increase the diversity from getting enough vitamin D, which is actually quite fascinating. There are certain ratios of microbes that uh, come out correct if you have enough vitamin D. There are additional microbes that will grow in the presence of vitamin D. In fact, these microbes are major butyrate producers. Now, what is butyrate? Butyrate is the small chain fatty acid that helps uh, improve your blood sugars. It helps to feed the colon cells. It actually gives you energy uh, when you produce this. It actually supports um, insulin and keeping insulin more sensitive. And a lot of people have a problem with that as well. These microbes that are dependent on vitamin D also help you make vitamin D. B. And so they actually exchange the B vitamins and they also give us B vitamins. And if they're not there because you are deficient in vitamin D, then you can be deficient in the B vitamins as well. And that can affect sleep. It can affect stress and your skin and all sorts of things. Now, the great uh, majority of the population has a subclinical deficiency of vitamin D, which means that it may not even show up on your blood it could be in the conversion from the inactive vitamin D to the active vitamin D. But as far as an actual deficiency, 40%, at least 40%, and I think it's probably more like 50 or 60% of people in the US and Europe are deficient in vitamin D. And 85% of people in the Arabic countries have a vitamin D deficiency. So what is the significance of that? Well, it increases the risk of cancer, diabetes, heart attacks, autoimmune diseases. Why? Because vitamin D has everything to do with the integrity of your gut epithelium. And since 80% of your immune system is in the gut, if there is a problem in the gut wall, you have leaky gut, a lot of these proteins and food particulates can get through and you can have this immune reaction and develop new antibodies against your proteins. And some of these proteins can mimic our own cells. So you start developing antibodies against your own tissues, thus the autoimmune condition. And by the way, a really good antidote or something to support autoimmune conditions, especially as we're talking about inflammation, is vitamin D in higher amounts. I've done videos on that. Then we have the inflammatory bowel disease connection, Allergies is an immune problem that's generated usually with a problem with the gut. Again, a link back to vitamin D. And then we have asthma. Children that play outside in the sun that get a lot of vitamin D seem to go in remission if they have asthma. And then we have dermatitis and psoriasis, which is connected to a vitamin D deficiency. So you can see the huge problem being vitamin D deficient. During the winter months, when people are severely deficient, they start getting depressed. They start getting sick more often because the vitamin D deficiency makes you more susceptible to viruses and bacteria. And a lot of people gain weight during the winter because of a vitamin D deficiency. Now that could be for many reasons. It could be that you just don't have the diversity of the microbes, which affects the blood sugars, causing you to have more cravings to carbs and eat more. But it could be other reasons as well. So just make sure that you're getting more sun during those months that you can get more sun. But during the winter, I would highly recommend start taking a good vitamin D on a regular basis uh, with a minimal amount of 10,000 IUs every single day and start to feed the microbes. So then the microbes can then make more B vitamins and exchange those because you fed them the vitamin D. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.